Hi students, this is the second part to the Evaluating Sources lecture. I promised it uh, to you last night and I did not uh, get that done. But this is going to be the quick part. It's not really evaluating sources so much as just looking at sources on the database, uh, making sure that you know how to choose a scholarly um, article. So let's get going. First thing we're going to do is go to just BC's website. Go to Student Services, Library, and we're going to find an article. So the most popular um, database that most students use, it's not the ones that you have to use, but it covers a wide variety of topics, is EBSCOhost. And EBSCOhost is actually a database that hosts other databases, but um, just for easy purposes, we usually call it a database. And if you see, there are several different ones here. This is a database in itself, Academic Search Complete. This is probably the most popular database that my students use. It covers a wide variety of topics, so no matter what your uh, research topic is, you might find something there. But you can see here's a health database. It's going to have a lot of health uh, medical articles maybe medical journals, the same with psychology and behavioral sciences. So if your topic's dealing with something to do with um, psychology, you might want to click this database. Uh, here's the ebook collection if you were wanting to find a book. Science and technology. I've had students do papers on um, electric cars, so there's something there. For now, I'm just going to click Academic Search Complete. You can select this button that says Select All. Uh, sometimes the research this takes a little bit longer, the search engine, to find articles if it's searching through every single database. So a good place to start is with Academic Search Complete. Let's see if it's going to make me log in here. No, sorry, I don't want to select all. I only want it academic. All right. So now we are in the database. Even though it says EBSCOhost, if you look right here, it says Academic Search Complete. So this is our database we're using. Um, let's just say I'm doing a paper on um, homelessness and maybe like the lack of resources. I'm going to argue that the government is not doing enough to provide support and resources for them to help them get out of homelessness or maybe that causes them to get into homelessness. So I'm going to type resource here. And because the word might be resources or resource or even resourceful, I'm going to remember put that little asterisk, um, which is going to truncate that. And now it's going to come up with any article that has any ending with resource. And I'm going to pick right homelessness. Although I don't want to choose homelessness because then that will only give me everything with actual the actual word homelessness, but there might be articles in there with the term homeless. Um, let's see. So I want to be sure and truncate that. Remember, if I use or, um, we might want to put transient. That's a synonym for homeless, so maybe um, something might pop up there. A resource. I'm trying to think what other term. Maybe we can put a benefit. So let's see what we get. I'm not going to uh, search any, click any of these other boxes down here yet. I want to show you what we get with just this. It's very, very, very general search. Okay, so the website says we have 13,760 um, sources here that we can search through. That's a lot. What I want you to do, take a note of this. Um, it might be on a quiz later. You always, always want to click full text. And let's see, we're at 13,000. What full text does is, if you remember, I'm from one of the videos. Full text means only articles will come up that the library, the BC library, has access to. So there might be some articles on here that are in another library, and BC could get it, but it could take a while. So always click on full text, and then you know you're going to get an article that you can access from the BC uh, library. 
Now let's see what our number is. So we dropped a lot, we were, right? We were at 13,000 something and we went down to 3,600. So like 10,000 we just dropped. So those might have been a lot of um, sources that you might have thought, oh, these look really good, I could use this. And then it turns out you don't have access to it. So always, always click full text. Remember you have to have a minimum of scholarly or peer reviewed journals. Once you reach that mark, then you don't have to have them. You can just have some credible sources. So while you're still looking for those, always make sure that this box is marked. I wanna see where we were at, 3667, and see how many we lose going to peer reviewed. Okay, so not a whole lot. We lost about, lost about 600, we're at 3100 now. And then you can always do things like change your date. We might wanna just go from maybe 1990 And then it'll update again, and we will probably use, I don't think we lost very many from there, but um, you know, it really depends on what your topic is. If your topic is on art, uh, computers, you're not going to want something from 1976, right? It needs to be really, really up to date because technology is always, always changing. So just make sure you do that. Now, no matter what article you find on here, you don't even have to really evaluate it because you know it's going to be peer reviewed because you've already checked that little box. And see where it says academic journal? Chances are, um, even if you hadn't had that marked, when you see that, it's usually an academic scholarly article. So we'll just click on this one. I wanted to show you, so you see these are some of the key terms that the search engine was looking for. And here's the abstract. I know we talked about this on one of the videos I showed you from the library. The abstract is kind of like the summary of the article, so you don't have to go through and search the whole article. It's not too bad. It's a 14-page article, um, but the abstract helps. One thing I do want to tell you, we'll work on it more later, but you can cite, you know, you have to cite these in MLA. So if you were going to use this article and you know when to use it and you're going to have to have it in your Works Cited page, click this little Cite button. And lo and behold, the library will do it for you. So all you'd have to do is copy and paste this. So make sure you scroll down and you're using MLA. That's what we use in this class. And here it is right here, the whole MLA citation. And all you would have to do is copy it and paste it. Make sure the format stays because sometimes when you copy and paste it into your Works Cited page for your paper, the formatting will get all messed up. So it does have to look like this. And we'll practice this some more, but I just didn't, I wanted you to be aware that the library will actually uh, cite your sources for you. And then you can um, email it to yourself or take a picture or whatever you want to do. You can always go back to it too. So I think that's about it. I, last night I talked to you about evaluating books and evaluating web, websites. And I'm going to actually give you a homework assignment on evaluating a website so that you can practice. I'm not going to make you evaluate a scholarly source. Because, like I said, once you cross that box off, check that box off for scholarly or peer-reviewed, then it's going to be an, a scholarly article and you're not going to have to worry about it. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or text me anytime. And um, let's get going on our research progress. See you later, friends.